I've been a Mario Party fan since I was a child. Oh, so like the old N64 games? No, you're old. I'm sorry. Like Mario Party 8. It was a family get-together game. Everyone can hold the Wii Remote, everyone can play minigames, everyone can land on the lucky spot and teleport straight to the star at the last turn, god damn it! So my excitement for a new Mario Party might have been a bit disproportionate. New Mario Party! New Mario Party! Yeah! yeah. Let's go! But that does make me the perfect candidate to stare at a screen for an hour dissecting the funny party game that's mostly luck-based anyway. Let's go! First thing I noticed before we even get the title drop, the background islands seem to all be maps from the game. Some might be menu-style islands with shops for purchasing unlockable characters and extra content, and this middle island has a convenient pedestal placed right at its center, leading me to believe that it will hold the ceremony at the end of every match. Go up to the pedestal, get a star, boom, Mario's the superstar! Moving on to the next interesting scene, here we're in a hot air balloon overlooking what looks to be this game's main menu area. Similar to how in Super Mario Party you're able to walk around and select which mode you're playing, maybe in this one you have to walk to the individual stage you want to play. As we can see here, some of the boards later shown off in the trailer are represented by their own little areas, connected by a path. Although some don't seem to be connected to anything, maybe this is a sign that we'll have to unlock them in the game, which would build a path allowing us to walk up to them and play. But then again, they could just have this as a more traditional menu where you hover over an arrow over the stage and just press play. But it would be really cool to see a more in-depth hub area, it wouldn't surprise me if that's the approach they decide to take. Up next, we're shown this scene of an island with four separate piers, two of which have different vehicles on them. Submarines and these kayak-looking things... Now, what I find weird is that this island really does look like it was made to be actually played in. Another menu island of sorts. Maybe this is the hub for a mode akin to Super Mario Party's River Survival mode. It does look like these boats and submarines could fit multiple characters in them, so that might just be it. We then get a quick look at the 20 playable characters, however, as we'll see in a bit, there are potentially some more unlockable characters still left unrevealed. The first new board we get to take a look at is Rainbow Galleria, a big shopping mall board with three traversable floors. Already we can see that the boards are bigger and more complex than what we got in Super Mario Party and it's not even close. A great sign for this game to be sure, but we'll only be able to truly tell if a board is good once we're actually rolling dice at them. Upon taking a closer look, we'll notice the return of event spaces and what seems to be various shops that will trigger if a player lands in said spaces. Also the return of bad luck spaces. This first area in the third floor calls my attention immediately as there is a big fourth slapped right on top of it. I think this might be directly involved with the player's placement. Maybe if you land on this space, you'll have to give 10 coins to 4th place, or teleport to 4th place, or any other variety of events that could happen involving that 4th place player. Maybe that placement could even shift between rounds, making for an interesting location. Right beside it, a red shop with 3 stars as its logo. An event space in front makes me believe this will be a small minigame of sorts with the chance for gaining coins, or maybe even stars. Next stop over is Boo themed. I think this will work the same as Boo does in previous games, letting you steal coins or a star. For the final stop in the third floor, an entrance with sparkles. I'm not sure what this could be used for, if I am to guess, maybe it's another minigame or some sort of shop. Daring guesses, I know. Right below that, a Boo Bell icon at the entrance to another store. This looks pretty self-explanatory, the Boo Bell in previous games lets you steal a star, I think this is a chance to acquire that item. In the very next shot, we get to see how it looks from up close and even the Boo Bells hanging in the wall beside it. Also, something to mention before we move on, the star is just sitting there. No Toadette, since she's playable now, no Toad, no one. Just the star, on its own, ready to be grabbed. Speaking of, here's Ninji grabbing that star right now, and they were not in that original character reveal image, making the character counter 21 so far. I believe there are even more characters we just haven't seen yet. Before we move on to the next board, I'd like to quickly go over the items we can see in the trailer. We can spot a dice block with lower numbers, a warp block and a triple dice. In the box art, we can see the boo bell from earlier, a skeleton key and what looks to be a new shell item. Curious to see what its use is going to be. And for other new items, we have the one they mentioned in the trailer, that being the turbo dice. And this poison mushroom badge thing that we can see while Luigi is holding. Might just be a reskin of the poison mushroom, or maybe they've reworked it into functioning differently. Our next stop is Raw. Golem Raceway. We get to see the full board as a racetrack layout right at the start. Unlike the last board, this one looks incredibly linear. And I think that's what they were going for, considering this board has what I presume to be an exclusive item in the form of the Turbo Dice. 
It's four dice blocks, it's just that, go fast, roll up to 40 spaces. I'll be honest, this one looks underwhelming to me. They are going for a fast-paced speed map and the distance from the stars seem to indicate that you'll be moving a lot. They haven't shown enough for me to truly form an opinion on it, I think it could be cool depending on what other mechanics they have included. Goomba Lagoon is up next, wide shot of the entire thing, and it looks interesting. I count five or so forks in a road, a path behind the zipline, one through corals, some high up, some down below. Those ones will be obstructed by the rising sea from time to time, forcing you to adjust your strategy on the spot. Event spaces are tied to chests, are a simple luck guessing minigame I presume. Also Toad's shop sits here and here. Then what looks to be the main mechanic of the level, Volcano exploding tons of golden Goombas everywhere, probably just earns you extra coins to be honest, but maybe it's something cool like collect 5 of them for a star. I'm just so happy to see actual maps in Mario Party again. I don't think I've seen anything close to this level of map design in Mario Party since like Mario Party 8. For the last two new maps, all we get is this one image, so let's enhance. Starting with Mega Wiggler's 3 party, the Wiggler at the center seems to be the main mechanic. It will walk around and block certain paths as the game goes on. Piranha plants seating beside event spaces is never a good sign, they'll take your coins as usual. Another event space holds a minigame, I think that blob of pixels is a toad and there's something behind him on that table. This will be a mashing minigame where you eat something faster than the others, I am calling it. For our last new map, King Bowser's Keep. And we can see nothing! Like next to nothing. It's a small image and it's zoomed without big bad Bowser at the center, event spaces around him, land on him, death. Probably. I can't make out anything else in this. That thing looks like Among Us, that's all I got. I won't go over dissecting each minigame, I think they mostly speak for themselves, I just will mention that they show Joy-Cons. They say some minigames require motion. I saw a lot of people freaking out, thinking this would mean no Pro Controller support and no Switch Lite support, just like Super Mario Party, but no. This jamboree will take your button inputs, no need to worry. I was worried too. It does seem, however, that those some minigames will be locked behind Joy-Con controllers, and you're not gonna be able to play them online. But yes, normal controllers will work for most of the game. Last big thing we get is the Coupathalon mode, 20 player online multiplayer. But no, this isn't a regular Mario Party, that would take ages to finish. Everyone is playing at once, I don't think there's dice, and your movement is determined by minigame placement. So it's a glorified minigame challenge. All minigames seem to be high score or survival based, to allow for multiple placements to make sense, and I think there will be some Coupathalon exclusives as well, most likely, I hope so. This has potential to be fun, let's see if Nintendo Online can handle a 20 player match without <laughs> bursting into flames. Also the Bowser minigames are looking cool and there's a boss fight of sorts, kinda reminds me of Mario Party 10. The only other noteworthy thing I wanted to mention is whatever this is. Mario and Luigi flying Peach around, the announcer does say there are even more new modes right when this is on the screen, I have no idea how it'll work realistically. It does look like a team game, the arrow leads me to believe you're carrying Peach around somewhere to drop her off and get a point, then maybe get another character and do the same, repeat for more points? Yeah, that's all I can realistically guess. It's good to see we're getting more modes, we just have to hope they're not going for quantity over quality mentality with this one. And that's all! Super Mario Party Jamboree! If you've learned anything from the analysis, maybe consider dropping a like and subscribing. I usually make videos on Nintendo stuff, we'll continue to in the future, we just got a lot of games to cover in the latest Direct, and I am super excited! Thanks again for watching, have a wonderful day, goodbye!